Hello, everybody. I uh, hope you're having a good Friday afternoon. Uh, I am. And uh, say hi to when you pop up here. I'll say hi on Facebook. The reality is I shouldn't be doing this on Facebook. I should be doing it on another um, platform, probably YouTube, or maybe Twitch for this group. Um, and it seems to be a little jittery today, which is strange. Um, yeah, I'm looking at uh, some issues here. So I'm going to try and continue forward. But yeah, I'm not. I'm surprised by seeing the uh, lag that I'm seeing, and I hope it's coming out okay. It is recording well, so if this is a bad live feed, which it looks like it might be, I will uh, take it down and I'll put it back up with the recording. Uh, either way, I'm going to push this up to YouTube um, as well because the main recipient of this is actually not really on Facebook, or at least not in our group very much. It's Steve Spawn, uh, who is from Able Gamers. And we have just kind of started to try and do something together. And I thought I would give him, uh, give you guys, a breakdown of a tool that, that um, might be useful for a lot of people. Um, we've talked about it on and off over the years, and I figure now is as good a way as any to, to kind of get started on it. So. Um, the thing we're talking about is the uh, HMC uh, micro or mini proportional joystick. Okay, let me see if I can get this a little bit brighter for you. Uh, so a lot of you guys know this uh, this joystick. Uh, it is very small. This one is broken a little bit. Uh, this was from uh, was donated by Jonathan Lasco to us. Um, lots of people use this joystick on their power chairs. Uh, let me. I'd like to get this a little bit brighter. Let me see if I can get a little brighter. I guess that's that's where we're going to be. So, um, so this this joystick is a super lightweight joystick. It's got a tiny activation, um, uh, tiny activation throw. It's a very small throw, uh, very very lightweight. I think it is a hall sensor, uh, which is a magnetic uh, sensor joystick. Oh, this thing pops off, and there's a little ball that can go on there instead, but. Um, it is, I think, fairly standard for a lot of folks who are use a very small joystick to drive their power chair, and uh, it is one of the very few things in AT that is kind of well documented, kind of not necessarily intentionally documented, uh, I don't think. So I'll show you a little bit about that, but the idea here, uh, we had actually um, recently put together a board that lets us mimic one of these. In other words, we can use any input we want to look like it is a uh, HMC uh, mic mini proportional joystick on one of these 9-pin outputs. Uh, I'll show you that in a little bit. We've been showing it with the, um, the, the mini Ella, the um, power chair Barbie doll that we, that we mocked up with it. And the idea is that in some cases we might be able to make a power chair controller that has more than uh, on and off. So for folks like Ella and Max, maybe Chris Young, we might have more options for them. When I met Steve Spawn, who's um, the CF, he's not the CFO, I'm not sure what he is, uh, but he's one of the leaders of the Able Gamers um, Foundation. Uh, they, they're a nonprofit that gets folks with uh, severe motor disabilities to, to game and get them on the XAC and we were, we were talking about the XAC, and I had a, a demo there, and he, ha he asked if I could do the opposite. Can I take one of these devices that somebody already has set up on their chair and is able to use, detach it from the chair, and make it a controller on, um, on the Xbox? And sure. So I, I did a little bit of research to figure out uh, how hard that would be. It turns out a lot of the work I had just finished doing worked. So I thought I would share it here and kind of give some options and kind of share what the the next steps on this might be. Um, I guess probably the best place to start would be uh, with this. So this is the documentation for the, um, the, the joystick. And it's not really documentation for the joystick. PG drives, which makes a lot of the um, uh, controllers, motor controllers for the power chairs, published a document uh, for their Omni controller that happened to completely call out exactly how this joystick works, right? So their, their nine-way nine D-type um, connector 
is spelled out pretty clearly on what it does. So pin one is for pin one is uh, left and right turning. I'm sorry. Pin one is forward and back. Pin two is left and right. Pin three is a, a reference, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, you feed it 12 volts uh, and you feed it ground and it basically feeds back the answers of what the joystick's doing on, on these two pins right here. You can also switch it into a digital function which we're not going to talk about. Um, it goes into some detail on what where the signal levels are, where the voltages are, how much current you should expect. Um, it's fairly detailed. I mean it's not it's not great as data sheets go, but it is so much better than anything else in AT that it's completely possible to design a system around this documentation. Uh, you can find this if you look online for a PG Omni manual, uh, te technical manual, you'll find this and it is out there. I think PG Drives was bought by Curtis Wright. Curtis Wright either was bought by Promobile or this portion of Curtis Wright was bought by Promobile. Um, or HMC was bought by Promobile. I'm not entirely sure, but a lot of consolidation has been going on. Um, but all of these, uh, all of the the Permobile chairs, at least the modern ones, have this nine-pin connector that you can hook up an appropriate joystick to. And I think the the vast majority of people out there who want a um, uh, a an appropriate joystick end up looking at uh, the one we have right here which is this one right here, the HMC Mini Proportional Joystick. Funny thing is, I actually tried to buy one of these and I could only get them on eBay because uh, I'm not sure they make them anymore. But um, I guess probably the next thing to do is to show the work that I've kind of already done on this. Um, if you're a regular on um, Adafruit's show and tell, you'll see that I made this device right here uh, last week, uh, two weeks ago. So this device takes uh, the nine pin interface uh, just like this one uh, and, it, and it mimics it pretends to be this device so um, the way that it works is you'll put it onto something like a feather uh, like this and then you'll be able to use any input you want like um, FSRs or other joysticks or whatever you want and these two digital potentiometers mimic a joystick. So this this device right here which I made is, is called the Joywing uh, right here. It's the uh, the joystick wing, the AT Maker's joystick wing. Um, it is pretty simple and it definitely works. So I am uh, I am looking forward to having a power chair that isn't uh, somebody's official power chair so that we can plug it in and start testing it and coming up with uh, interesting ways to, to drive chairs. Uh, in doing this, I kind of did a lot of work with the 12 volts and, and learning how the, uh, how the signals go back and forth. So uh, with that in mind, uh, I thought, well, let, let's actually make sure that this thing behaves the way we think it does. So we did a little bit of testing, and I'll show you kind of how that works out. Um, all right. so. I just powered it up. Let me see if I can get you to turn off my camera for a second and stick this there. All right. So let's talk about what we're looking at here, right? So we've got um, the joystick right here, right? Uh, it goes out to the box and back, but um, it is now connected to. Uh, a little breadboard and all this breadboard really does is break out the pins and give it 12 volts and this is um, this is 12 volts I could have used in fact I was using this until I tried to get it under a camera but any 12 volt um, power source will send 12 volts into uh, the joystick which sends back its results so we can take a look here and see that it does work um, as you can see uh, 12 volts goes in right here, and if you look on my uh, on my potentiometer over there, you'll see it says 12.63. It's a little high, so the re the reason it's a little bit high is that these are alkaline batteries, and so you're going to be a little bit higher than 1.5 volts each. So we're at a little over 12 volts. The joystick doesn't seem to mind it. Um, the next one here is ground, 
And for some reason, you have to give 12 volts on two pins. I'm not sure why, but we did that. That's in the spec. It says that we're supposed to do that. And then we should be getting back the results on pins 1, 2, and 3. Pin 3 is a reference ground, uh, which should be right at 6 volts. And it's 6.3 because we're feeding in uh, over 12, right? So no matter what I do on the joystick, that shouldn't change. Uh, we can talk about why they're giving us that back. Uh, it's mainly so that if you've got a voltage drop over a long cord or something, you can adjust for it. Um, this pin right here should be um, the uh, forward motion. And so you should see that if I go this way, it'll go down, and that way it'll go up. So it looks like I got from about 7.5 down to about 5.25, uh, which is correct. We'll talk about why. And then if I look at the, the other pin here, pin 2, it should go the other way. Left and right should should uh, control that. So this seems to be completely doing what it's supposed to do. So if you feed it 12 volts, uh, it will feed back 6 volts on pin 3 and uh, 6 volts plus or minus 1.2 volts uh, on the two forward uh, back and left to right uh, pins. And so that's all this, all this little device right here does is it takes this device, powers it, reads the, the Hall Effect sensors in it, and feeds it back like it was a simple joystick. Uh, so that your circuit sees the two potentiometers of forward, back, left, and right. Um, we can talk about why it's as expensive as it is, but that's I'm getting tired of that conversation. So um, it, is, it is what it is. Um, if you have one of these and you want to use it to control something other than your power chair, um, this should be very doable, okay? So let's take a look at what we would do here um, if we wanted to control, let's say, an XAC uh, with this. So what we'd want to do is we would want to have a wing that looks like this that takes in a 9-pin connector. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether it's male or female. You see I've got a little adapter right there. Well, there's always an adapter for this stuff, right? But um, it takes in a 9-pin uh, old serial style connector, reads the values just like we did up here, and then feeds it into a microcontroller. And so the microcontrollers we would talk about primarily, I think, would be ones like this. So this is a feather. It is probably, like, if we design the board to take a feather, we're really, really being um, flexible because, like, this feather has Bluetooth on it. So it could be a mouse to go into an iOS device now that iOS 13 has mouse control. Um, if we chose a different feather, this could go onto a, a, a Wi-Fi uh, connection. Um, other feathers are just cheaper that don't have either. Um, there, there's a lot of options and there's a very uh, standard uh, interface for this. You plug in USB right here and you, um, and you basically pop this on the standard pins on the back. Um, we've got lots of uh, cases that we know how to make that will stack these up. You don't necessarily have, a, have to have the pins on the bottom. And you have a device right here, it would be about this size, um, that would allow you to do your control, send your output, your USB output here to the XAC, um, and this will mimic a gamepad and just work into the USB inputs on the uh, Xbox adaptive controller. So this is doable. Um, there are some challenges. Uh, the biggest challenge is you'll notice that I have 12 volts here. And if you're just starting with a feather, uh, you really only have 5 volts to start with. You've got the 5 volts from the USB pin. So I told Steve in our conversation that I had an ugly way to do this and a, a pretty way. Um, the ugly way basically is uh, we can have a jack, right? We can have a jack on the board that takes in 12 volts from a wall ward. Um, that's an easy solution. It's not that bad because in reality you're going to be sitting in an Xbox, an XAC. You're not. Um, you're going to be at something, some place that has a television. So the likelihood that it also has a spare outlet is not crazy. Uh, this 12 volts would then could then be used uh, to power the joystick, um, and the USB would power just the um, just the um, 
the feather. You have to be careful on a couple of things with that. You got to make sure you properly isolate things. Uh, but it's certainly doable, and it's probably the least expensive option. Uh, you'd probably have to pay a couple bucks for a wall warp, but we all have we all have power adapters everywhere, right? So that's an option, but it's kind of ugly. It means you've got to have a second plug coming in here for power. Um, another option is to use a chip and um, I don't know if I have a picture of one here. Uh, I have one physically here I can show you, but it's going to look like a little chip. Um, I guess I could. You can use what's called a boost converter. I went ahead and bought a couple of them. Um, yeah, so here's one. So I bought some boost converters. These are little chips that will take the five volts from the USB um, the USB plug and basically boost it up to 12 volts. It's very limited current, but I did, did the measurements and it turns out that the um, the joystick only requires about 20 milliamps. It's very, very low. Uh, so we really, we literally could take take one of these and put it on the um, on the circuit and be able to eliminate the wall wart. They're about six or seven bucks, um, you know, in quantity one, and it would eliminate a three or four dollar wall wart and a lot of hassle. Um, so I like the idea of using this. One of the things I would like to do if I had more time, and I probably will do because I'm, I like distracting myself, um, is good to go ahead and um, wire up a circuit using this um, using this chip that not only does the um, the reading of that, but does the the boosting up and see if I can get the joystick to work off of just the 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 straight five five volt USB from the XAC. I'm I'm very confident I'll be able to do that. Um, let me put these over here so I don't get them mixed up. So this is a good option. The other problem you might have noticed is that when the when the current comes when the, when the voltage comes back, um, it's coming in between 4.8 and 7.2 7 volts. Um, that's a problem because the feather, uh, this feather, all the feathers really only like to take in between 0 and 3.3 .3 volts for input. So it's going to read those values here. Uh, I was working with Dan Halbert from Adafruit on this and there are a couple of um, there are a couple of possibilities on how to solve this. Uh, there's the easy one and there's the accurate one. And I was thinking uh, that I had to do the, the accurate one and I no longer think that. So I can kind of give you the, the basics if you want. Uh, I'm not sure how important it is. I will show you first a, um, a look at what this what this would look like um, as a board. So I went ahead and la laid out a board that has uh, let me see if I can show the kind of the schematic here. So it has the um, it has the feather layout. So this is connecting to the feather underneath it. Uh, it takes the, uh, and this is actually wrong, uh, this should be taking the USB input, not the enable pin. Uh, so I will fix, <laughs> I will fix that. Uh, but it takes the USB input and um, sends it into that boost converter. Uh, oh, looks like I lost you guys. And it came back, so. I hope you're able to still see me. No, looks like you guys are stuck. Um, I'm sorry about that. It is recording, so I will repost this. But um, if you're not seeing this, you're not hearing me, so it doesn't matter. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish this and repost it as a recorded uh, video. So the uh, let me put this up there. Yeah. So it takes in the uh, the power from the USB, converts it up to 12 volts, sends it out to the joystick, and when it comes back, it uses simple voltage dividers to send that data back into um, the feather. Uh, voltage dividers aren't the most accurate solution to this, right? They are, um, they are at best inaccurate solutions to this. Uh, I could kind of explain why. There is another option I could use. Instead of these voltage dividers, I could use uh, three op-amp circuits, or, or two even two op-amp circuits would be good. They would give me the full accuracy of the measurement 
Uh, I just I don't think it's necessary for this. Um, I can kind of give you um, an idea of why I started to think it was. I kind of went down the kind of went down the um, the road of it was going to be necessary. But uh, to think about kind of what what we need to do here, let me draw something for you real quick. So we've got um, we're sending out zero to twelve volts, right? So here's zero. Here's twelve volts. This is what we're sending to the joystick. Um, it is sending us back three values. It is sending us back the center. We'll call that six volts. Okay. Um, it it is sending us back um, a value somewhere between seven point two and four point eight. So it's sending us back a horizon horizontal value and a vertical value, right? So the response coming back really is always going to be between um, 4.8 and 7.2, right? So what we would really want to do is to have some circuit that mapped that into uh, zero, lining up with 4.8, and 3.3, lining up with 7.2. And that would give us the full resolution of the analog to digital co converters on the feather. Um, we can do that with two op amps. We, we can do that. Uh, it doesn't cost that much more. It is a lot more components to solder onto the board. And there are a lot more places where this can go wrong. Uh, so while I will probably try this circuit, uh, so you can use an op amp. To do this conversion, um, we probably won't. What we'll probably do, and rather than redraw this, uh, we will probably use a voltage divider so that instead zero maps to zero, and we'll simply divide this by um, about three, maybe a little better than that. I think we can basically say that um, 7.2 will, will map somewhere around three. Right, so we will map zero to seven point two to zero uh, to three. What that really means is that we will only have uh, basically this range of values coming back, about a third, about a third of the total range that's possible. And I thought that was bad. I thought that was really bad, and it wasn't worth doing until I realized that on these chips, this range maps from zero to four zero ninety six. So if we only have a third of that, we still have over a thousand, uh, a thousand uh, divisions in there. So it's five. So from the center forward, it's it's 500 different positions, and from the center back, it's 500 different positions. Um, it's plenty. It's going to be absolutely plenty for a gaming system. And so I think that it's much easier to just use the voltage dividers and um, make a simpler circuit that is something we can crank out and, and get into testing easily. So uh, a couple questions would be what would it cost? So making a custom PCB board like this runs you about a buck a board. Um, you can get it for less, you can get it for more, it depends on how many you make. But it'll cost about a buck a board to make it. In the design that I showed you here, um, in this design here, um, this has the voltage converter up to 12 and a bunch of capacitors that, that go along with that. A couple of dio a diode, an inductor, uh, and six resistors along with um, the, I don't know if I have a, yeah, this one, so the, um, the jack here on the end. Uh, total cost of those components will be probably fifteen dollars um, so it's about seven for the power converter and then yeah, I would say probably about fifteen dollars maybe sixteen if you count the board so you got sixteen dollars to make it um, and one of the nice things about this design is that it is something that anybody can make so uh, it is all through hole it is all nice big easy to solder in components there's no 
surface mount work. There's no tiny tweezer work at all. Um, and any maker group can make this. So um, I, I like that. Um, in the long run, are there other options? There are. Let me uh, kind of show you some real quick other options. So this is one. It would look like this, and it would fit on top of a feather. So that would be, let's say, $16 to make the, the board that, that does this conversion, as well as the cost of a feather. Now those go anywhere from $15 to $30. In reality, the least expensive ones, the feather um, ESP8266 will not work for this. So I think the least expensive one then goes up to like $18, the ESP32 up to 30 bucks for some of the higher end ones, the 8260, uh, the uh, uh, NRI52840 I think is 25, something like that. So let's say 20 bucks-ish for this chip. Now, is this chip really the best choice? It depends, it really does. This layout lets you choose after the fact what you wanna connect it to. So this layout into this board gives you Bluetooth and USB. Into another one, it could give you radio. Into another one, it could give you um, Wi-Fi. There, there's a lot of options. But we have two other options over here, too. We could uh, design this board so that instead of plugging into a feather, it took either an Itsy Bitsy, which is $15, uh, or a, um, a trinket right here, uh, that popped on top of it just like these boards do. So the trinket is $8, uh, seven in quantity. So let's say eight bucks. So that would basically knock $15 off, but you wouldn't have the choices about Bluetooth and things like that. Um, so there's trade-offs here. We can do both, right? We can do a feather and one that takes, I probably wouldn't do the, the trinket, but one that takes the itsy bitsy. I think all of these are later decisions. I think it probably makes sense to make one of these um, and populate it with the resistors and the um, and the 12 volt converter, right? So this little 12 volt converter uh, and the capacitors that it needs to do that. So I think that that's the shortest path to what Steve Spawn wants. Uh, it certainly is not thousands of dollars, neither in R&D nor in unit price. The idea that there's a uh, there's more than one zero in a unit price on this is not necessary. Okay, uh, even if you were doing this retail, the cost of making it would be twenty bucks. Retail would be sixty bucks, triple it, um, and that would be high in my opinion. If you weren't making them by hand, you would have a fab house in China or in the Philippines or somewhere um, do the assembly for you. You'd use about half the space and um, you would cut off probably three or four dollars in manufacturing costs and you wouldn't have to do the labor. So you know, if, you, if we wanna make 10,000 of these, we don't have to make them maker friendly. But if we wanna make them maker friendly, uh, they're still a very good value. So, so I'm sure this video has cut in and out. I'm not sure why um, our Wi-Fi in the building has been slightly flaky, but not like this. Uh, but I am recording it all, so I will post the actual recording up to YouTube and then back to Facebook again. I apologize if it was uh, frustrating for folks. I'm sure it was. I have no comments, so that either means that uh, y'all gave up on this or... Uh, I also am not seeing comments, so we'll find out. I hope this is uh, instructional for some of you. Uh, if you have thoughts about how you would use this joystick, you know, beyond an XAC controller, you know, you want to talk about um, using this to control, I don't know, a drone or, um, you know, whatever else, or a mouse. Um, certainly perfectly possible. Same exact hardware is needed to do it. There would be no difference in the design of the board uh, to have it control anything else. So let me know what you think about that, whether you think they would be um, useful or not. Hope you guys have a great weekend, and I will see you all later.